Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador, and I'm here in Cuenca, Ecuador today with my good friend Isabel Mascara. Isabel, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Joe. Isabel is a visa facilitator, and I'm going to let her introduce herself to you. Oh, I'd like to thank you, Joe, for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself and to talk about my experience with what I do to assist the expat community. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about myself. I am Isabel Mosquera. Um, I left my home country when I was very young um, to live in Canada. Uh, and after 10 years, because of personal reasons, um, we came back to Ecuador. And here I am uh, working with the U.S. community. My, my clients are mostly from the U.S., um, from Canada, and England. Since then, I have been working as a visa facilitator for over nine years already, and I have assisted hundreds of people with different needs in uh, obtaining their visas, uh, their, their different types of visas. Um, I don't know if um, you want to talk about the different types of, of visas. We have many different types of visas, but I'm going to talk about the most um, common visas. Um, there Please are, do, yes, go, go right ahead. There are the retirement visas, um, um, investment visas, professional visas, rentist visas. There are many more, but those are the four more um, common ones that people um, apply for. For the retirement visas, um, Usually we need uh, the Social Security Income Verification Letter from um, the Social Administration Office. Of course, there are many other um, companies that uh, pay to retirees. So depending on, on the company, people will get their um, income letters. And you can assist with those income letters? Yes, if they come, if my clients come without the documents, I'm here to assist. Also, I do have my assistant in the U.S. Um, that works with me, and she assists with the documents from there. It's better to get all of these documents before you come to Ecuador to apply. It's better to have all of that arranged. Yes, it is. I do um, speak with, with my, most of my clients contact directly from the U.S., and so that's when I give them all the information in order to bring the documents to Ecuador. So that is easier, and it costs less money to them. Once they get the documents here, I take the documents, and it's my job to do it, your visa. Um, I do the translations. Um, I guide to my clients from the beginning to the end, there are some clients that they not like to get involved in the process because it's too tedious for, for them. So um, if, um, if they don't want to get involved with the process, all they do is uh, give me a power, they give me a power of attorney in order to work by themselves. All they have to do, show up for the last step, which is the cedula card, the Ecuadorian ID. Um, now I'm going to talk about the professional visas. Before, before you move on, and that's what you did for my mother-in-law, was she gave you power of attorney, you took care of everything until we had to get to the point where she had to have her cedula. You have to be present for that because they have to take your picture for that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and, and that's what I'm going to do now too, so she doesn't have to come to Cuenca. Well, yeah. she has to send me the documents from Vilcabamba, and I'll take care of everything. Um, Okay, so I will move on with a professional visa. With a professional visa, um, usually my clients, they have to bring the diploma, the transcripts, and a letter from the university. There are three important documents um, to bring in order to register their diplomas within the Senecid office in Ecuador, which is the, the Ministry of Education. It takes about a month to um, to register their documents here. Once it is registered um, with that document, we can go straight with the, with the visa process, which is much, much easier for them because they don't have to show up income. 
that's a, that's a, a very good um, visa for for young um, um, for young people that they are using a lot here, especially for those who have diplomas. So, with the retirement visa, what's the minimum income that they need to be able to show? Okay, the minimum income right now it's um. $1,275. Uh, it depends on the basic salary in Ecuador. We, um, we have to show up three basic salaries from Ecuador, which is $450 right now. So $450 times three, that is the income that we have to show from uh, the US. I see. Um, like I said, for the for the professional visa, there is no income you involved, have to show income to unless people. there is um, the, un, unless if they, this person wants to um, uh, has uh, his wife or kids um, being its dependents. In that case, they have to have um, one basic salary in Ecuador, which is four hundred and fifty dollars income that they have to show, and, it, and they can show through bank statements. Uh, they can show through uh, deposits here in Ecuador, um, and, and it's only one. So not, you don't have to worry much, but that, that, that's one of the easier visas. Fantastic. Fantastic. So that's the, um, the professional visa, the retirement visa. The next one is the investor visa? Yes, the investor visa involves an investment, whether you do through um, land, or uh, any property it could be a uh, could be a house, an apartment, or it can be an investment at any bank or credit union. Um, it, it must be for forty-five thousand dollars right now. Um, and and the the good thing with the investment visas is that they they get back a very good interest rate up to eight point five percent and nine nine percent. That that interest rate. Um, most people really like it because there are some expats that they live with the interest rate here. That's true. That's over $300 a month on a two-year um, CD. Exactly. Uh, yes. $45,000. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't wanna, if you don't want to invest longer than, than two years, once they go for the for the permanent residency visa, they can release the investment and they can use it. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you can convert. A, if you have a CD and you want to put land instead, you could then put the land instead of the CD. Yes. Yes, you can, you can do that. Or but vice versa. Yeah. Yes, you can do that, but you have to um, do it your visa first, then you can release the CD. Otherwise, if you release the, the, the money, you will lose the visa and you will have to go back home. Start all over. <laughs> yes. We don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but no, no, um, that don't, doesn't happen really. Yeah. So one of the reasons you would want to do an investor visa instead of a retirement visa is, as in my case, I was not retirement age when I came to Ecuador. So I didn't have Social Security for one full year to be able to show. So we did the investor visa and I did the CD and I didn't want to put up the land. I would rather do the CD and have the income from the CD. Well, yeah, which is, which is good because I'm, I'm sure you release your, your money once you, um, once you apply for your um, uh, retire, retirement visa, right? <laughs> or, uh, or citizenship. Or citizenship, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the rentista visa. There is also a rentista visa. What happens with this visa is that um, uh, you must have um, a rental a rental income from um, back home. Uh, this rental income has to cover the three basic salaries, salaries which is uh, right now twelve seventy five. So you have to show um, a rental uh, agreement. Legally, uh, uh, legally done in the U.S., it, ha it must be notarized and apostilled in order to be accepted by the immigration uh, authorities here. So, on the top of that, you have to show the deposits through bank statements. For the deposits year. from the income for, for no, it has to be for two years. For two years, wow. Yeah, it has to be for two years, and um, that is called a rentista visa. Fantastic. Okay. Um, 
I don't know what other visa. Um, there are there are a couple of other visas that are not used very much. Um, uh, basically, a dependent visa in Amparo, but that's not hardly used anymore. Um, we used it on my original uh, temporary visa, but no longer. This yeah. is not no longer dependent on my visa. Yeah. Yeah. The the Amparo visa means that if let's say if you have your visa, you can add your wife on your visa, so she will get an Amparo visa because she's your wife, or in the case. For parents, if they have kids, they can also get the Amparo visa. For the kids. For yeah, the kids. That makes yeah. sense. That is called an Amparo visa. Okay, fantastic. So, is there any, with the different visas, is there any limit to how much you can travel outside of Ecuador? Yes, there is. Unfortunately, yes. Um, right now, on the temporary visas, you can only leave the country for three months. Three months if on a temporary visa. Yeah. In order to qualify for the permanent residency visa. Now, you can leave longer than that. You're free to do that if you need, but you have to apply all over again with all the documents. Uh, again, you have to bring the FBI background check, the state background check, and the, all, all the rest of the requirements to apply to start from the beginning. And the temporary visa, is the first visa that you have to apply for, and that will last 22 months? Um, that is for 24 months. 24 months. But you can uh, start with the, with the process for your uh, um, permanent residency visa after the 21 months. Oh, after the 21st yeah, month? Yes. Okay, so then you, you apply for the permanent visa. Exactly, yes. So you have 21 months, and then you can apply for the permanent but it's actually a 24-month visa. Yes. Makes sense. Exactly. Yes. Fantastic. And so, um, with the other visas, what are the travel restrictions once you have your your permanent residency? Are there any? Um, no, really. I wouldn't say that. Usually, people say with the investment visa, you you're free to travel. Yes, you are free to travel, and you're free to apply as many times as you as you want for the temporary visa. But you still have to bring all the documents. So I suggest my clients not to leave the country if they, if they can for the, um, for, the, uh, for the 21 months okay. for, with every type of visa. Okay, so now, but when we get the permanent visa, we can travel as much as we want out of the country? Or? You can travel up to six months, every, uh, like every two years. Depending on? Uh, I mean, every, every year, I'm sorry. Six months after the, the um, with permanent. your permanent residency visa. And it doesn't year. matter which visa I have, it, it just has matter. to be the permanent visa. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. After after the twenty one after the twenty one month, um, if you haven't left the country, there is a visa that um, it's called um, the permanent residency visa. Uh, they qualify if if they haven't left the country, they only need the the twelve month deposit and then they qualify for the permanent residency visa if you haven't left the country. If you haven't left the with country. Any, with any type of, uh, of visa. After the 21st month, um, there is no name of visa anymore. Like There's no investment, there is no retiree. Once once you apply for the permanent residency visa, it's just the permanent residency. Just there the is no, there nothing. is no, nothing else. Okay. So six months uh, you have to be in the country, six months you can travel. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, that is, that is uh, freedom for you guys, yeah. So I have to say that um, for our temporary visa, we used someone else for that process. That was a huge mistake. For the permanent visa, Isabel took care of it and it made it completely painless. And that is my suggestion to you. Don't go through the pain that we went through. Let Isabel take care of it Thank for you. you. And, and don't get excited. It's going to happen. Um, I, I don't know of anyone who's been completely denied, but I've heard that some people have been denied in the past. What can get you denied from getting a, a temporary? Um, and, you know, usually what Bad I, criminal record, maybe? Right now, a bad criminal record, yeah. yes. Um, what I do now is I, I talk to my client before I take the case and I make sure that there are not criminal, um, um, you know, they, they, they can be, you know, your criminal report, um, I don't know, in the U.S., um, they, they, um, do, they have problems with traffic and, uh, and uh, with police 
But those, those things are doable here. You know, they, the, the authorities will, will let, let, let it go. But if there are other, like, weapons, like... You felony know, charges. Yeah, we call felony, it felony charges. charges. Um, I would say there is a problem. Yeah. We, I have to be careful with my clients right now because I have gone through with, um, with them. So far, I haven't failed with anybody, but I have to warn them before I start the process. Yeah. yeah. In the U.S., we have misdemeanor charges, which are lesser charges, but they have different classes for those. It could be an A, B, or C class. Um, so um, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say misdemeanors aren't a problem, but definitely felonies could be a problem. So if you have a felony on your record, um, talk to Isabel about it, and uh, she'll get a, you can even talk to them in advance before we apply to That's be sure. That's what I do. That's what I do right now. Yeah. Yes, it's very important to talk with the client about that. The client must be open and tell us the truth because the, the Equatorian authorities are getting more and more strict. Don't lie, they'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Isabel, if she doesn't know the answer to one of your questions, she's very good at going off and researching with the people who do know at the government and, uh, and coming back to you and telling you exactly what they say. And she also knows which of the visa offices are going to be uh, less crowded and yes. easier to get these documents done at. Yes. So uh, she's, yes. she's in these offices every day. She, she has her finger on the pulse, so to speak. <laughs> I do. I do. I know most of these people right now. You know, I've been working for over nine years, and I know who to go with. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there, is, there is nothing to lie or there is nothing to, um, to ask them for. All I do is go with the truth and go with the, with, the, um, with the correct paperwork. You know, they don't give you favors, um, especially I would, talk, I would talk about the office here in the Sogas. You know, they're very nice people. They're very um, helpful, but if with a criminal record, they have to stop, they will stop. It's business, business is yes. business. Yes, <laughs> We always yes, say that in is. Texas, business is business. Business is business, and they, they gotta be careful with the people who we get here. So, so Isabel, for the people who are thinking about immigrating here, um, what would you say that they should prepare in advance? I mean, you, each individual is gonna be different, I know, but generally, they need to get a criminal background check they're going to have to get, um, the income statements for a retirement visa through Social Security or whatever your pension is. Um, they're going to need that. Yes. The FBI, the FBI background check is the most important right now because, they, because of the Equatorian authorities are very worried about the type of people that are, are bringing in. So if, let's say if they had a background a, a, a background uh, in the past, uh, please make sure to bring, um, I don't know how you call the document that it's being released from the court when they had um, a problem. So bring the court the court decision, that's what they're asking now. Okay, the court now, decision. Even though, even though if my clients ha had a problem in the past, if the court decision was, let's say, there are many people who have small or little problems and they can go through with that, with the, with the court document. They want to see the adjudication and, and what Yeah, the what the decision yeah. was. That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, the next one is the state background check. Um, the state background check needs to be notarized and apostilled through the, the, uh, through the Secretary of the State. Uh, the income verification letter from Social Security or from any other entity must be notarized and apostilled through the Secretary of State as well. For those, for, for those who are married, they need the marriage certificate apostilled through the Secretary of State. We do need one bank statement for those who are retired. The bank statement must show the same amount of deposit from Social Security. Sometimes it varies because, you know, uh, Social Security um, gets um, um, some money for insurance and all that. Right, for Medicare. That, that yeah. is okay. That is fine. So the, the, the authorities will, will see that. Um, that's basically it. And for the kids, 
Uh, we need the, the birth certificates. Those must be um, apostilled as well. Mm -hmm. The documents shouldn't be uh, older than six months. The documents are good uh, within six months. Um, don't, don't look the date on the apostille. It has to be the date on the actual document. Um, that's, that's basically it. You know, there are other documents that we, we need to get here, but those are local documents, and I usually take care of those. Okay, well, I'm going to let Isabel talk to you directly, and I will list all of her information in the description box um, below our video so that you can get in contact with her. I'll put her email there, her telephone number, all the contact information. And I suggest don't reach out to me, but to reach out to her because what I tell you may change from day to day. What Isabel tells you is going to be what the government wants. And so, um, you know, for instance, I'm going to tell you bring two apostille uh, copies of your marriage certificate, you know, because we needed a second one and didn't have it. Uh, but she'll tell you what you need and she'll give you the straight scoop on it. Okay, thank you. That sound good? Yes, yes. All right, anything Anytime, you wanna add? I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy to answer, you know, as many questions as, as you guys ask me. From the beginning to, uh, to the end, all I do is I try to make your move easier, easier. Yeah as easier as I can, you know. Also, there are, um, my work, it's kind of special with people because most of my clients are, um, are retired. And you know, when you move to a new country, everything is new to you. So what I do is I, my services, my services is basically door to door. So um, that way I, I make their lives easier. Start so. to finish, door to door. Yes. Isabel, I, I, I have to tell you, we never left the house for our permanent residency. Isabel took care of it all until it came time for the cedula picture. We had to come to Cuenca, get our picture taken, and that took maybe 30, 40 minutes, and we were done. Yeah, that's the only, that's the end of the process, and you can escape that. <laughs> and there's no truth to the rumor that I broke their camera when they took my picture. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. Isabel, so, thank you so much. This okay. is, uh, this is going to be a big help to a lot of people, and people are very apprehensive about this part of the process. They don't need to be. Um, she is going to take care of it for you and, and make it as painless as it can possibly be. Um, I'll be happy to answer all the questions uh, anytime. As many questions as you need, you can call me, you can write me, I'll be there to answer your questions. Fantastic. Isabel, thank you again. And we look forward to you folks giving her a call. And I hope you'll like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe.